Today on Gadget Class, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the hard drive in your PC computer with a new solid state drive. This will apply to both laptop and desktop PC computers. The only difference will be actually how we copy the files over to the new hard drive. Now, when you're upgrading to new solid state drive, there's basically two ways of going about it. You've got the squeaky clean method and you've got the cloning of the hard drive method. I'm going to go over the cloning of the hard drive method in this video today, but I am doing a video on the squeaky clean method as well. If you want to do it that way, go ahead and check out the video description below. I'll put a link to that video as well. Uh, what are the advantages of doing it either way? Well, with the squeaky clean method, you get a completely clean uh, factory restore image install. Okay. There's no spywares, there's no registry errors, there's no um, little programs running in the background that you don't want or aren't even aware of. Um, you're basically going to be using your factory recovery media or a clean OS install disk, and you're going to install a new OS onto your new solid state drive. That's going to make sure you have the best performance possible on your new system. You're not going to have any old files or settings that are slowing things down. Um, so I do recommend that way. Check out the video. Uh, link in the description below for the squeaky clean method. But for those of you that want to keep your programs and settings intact, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video today. First thing you're going to need is a solid state drive, of course. I'm using the Samsung 850 Evo. It's one of the better hard drives you can buy in 2015. Um, if you're on a super budget, you can get like the Crucial MX100. Um, it's got a 512 gigabyte version that um, probably uh, on par with this, uh, but it only comes in a 512 gigabyte version. Um, the Sam Samsung 850 Evo is a good solid state drive across the board, um, and I would recommend it. I'll put links to both of those down in the video description below, um, so you can make your uh, buying decision appropriately. The other thing you're going to need if you're on a laptop computer is some sort of SATA to USB adapter. And I'm just going to use the back end of a hard drive enclosure. Um, it's simple and it's easy. If you want to, you can use like an adapter like this from Inatech. Um, but I'm just going to use my hard drive enclosure back end. If you're on a desktop PC computer, all you're going to have to do is plug that hard drive into your secondary hard drive bay, put a new SATA cable going from it to the motherboard, and you're good to go. Um, in fact, you're going to want to do that right now before you start this whole process. So go ahead and shut down your computer, um, install the solid state drive into your um, desktop computer and uh, restart this guide. Um, if you want a video on showing how to actually do that hardware process, check out my other videos. I'm going to do that as well. Today I'm demonstrating on a laptop computer because it's a lot more involved on a laptop. Um, not a lot more, but it is more complicated. That's why I'm using a laptop to demonstrate. So, the third thing you're going to need is the software, and uh, I'm going to recommend Macrium Reflect. Um, it's good enough that uh, even like the most seasoned computer guru will be able to use it just fine and not have any issues. Um, and it's also within the reach of a newbie that doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, I'm going to walk you through the entire process from download to install to cloning, the whole entire process. So, don't worry, if you're not too too well grounded in computers, um, you should be able to follow this video and be just fine. So check out the video description below. I'll put a link to this site here, macrium.com slash reflectfree.aspx. Uh, we're going to go ahead and download the free version here. That link will take us to download.com. We're just going to click the big green download button in the middle. Don't click the ones on the side. Those are ads. And we'll just save that to our desktop. And that actually downloads the Macrium official download agent. Um, it's not some weird download.com download manager. It's actually an official Macrium uh, download agent. So you don't have to worry about like trying to install toolbars or set your, your browser defaults and stuff. Um, it's good software. Just leave everything default. We're installing the free version. We're going to save it to our desktop. We're going to run the installer after downloading. Go ahead and click download. Now, the first time you go to download this, it might ask you to install the Windows PE uh, files. That's basically the Windows pre-installation environment files. They are about 400 megabytes. If it prompts you to do that, go ahead and just let it do it. Um, we aren't actually going to use any kind of pre-installation environment. 
The reason I chose Mac Room Reflect is we don't have to boot off of a Windows PE disk. We don't have to boot off of a, a Linux kernel or shell disk. Um, everything's going to be done right here in Windows. There's no crazy steps involved. It's easy and everyone can do it. I'll go ahead and pause it for you guys and come back when that's done. While that's finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the solid state drive here. Just going to plug it straight into my uh, hard drive enclosure business end there, like so. And then we're just going to plug it into the USB port. You can do it this way on a desktop computer as well. Um, but if you're going to be installing it in a hard drive bay anyways, uh, might as well just leave it where it's going to be. Um, so that's installed, it's ready to go. When you first uh, plug in a new hard drive, your computer might ask you um, to initialize the disk as either an MBR disk or a GPT disk. Since we are using this as a boot device, you're going to want to select MBR. Just click next on the install. It's a pretty lightweight program. There's not a whole lot to it. Accept the license agreement. Next. And we do not want to register at this point in time. Next. And install. Really basic, simple install. And finish. Now we've got this nice reflect icon on our desktop. Go ahead and double click that there, click yes, and it scans the bus, uh, it wants us to register. Do not do not remind me to register, I don't want to register. Alright, this is your main Macrium screen here. You've got our primary hard disk here, this is our 1 terabyte Samsung 5400 RPM drive. And you can see here we've got 5 partitions on there, um, that's important. Down here is our secondary drive, this is our new SSD. Disk 2 mass storage device, uh, 465.76 gigabytes. And you can see here there's no partitions on it. It's a, a clean new hard drive. Now, five partitions here. Um, the reason I recommend the squeaky clean version of upgrading an SSD, these five uh, partitions are there very specifically in a, in a specific order uh, to maintain the ability to um, boot off of your recovery partition on your hard drive. As soon as you start messing with the size and the shape and the order of these partitions, you destroy your ability to boot off your recovery partition on your, your hard drive. Um, not a big deal, but uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a hard drive, you might as well be able to boot off uh, the recovery partition. You know, it, it just makes more sense to go ahead and maintain the capability of your computer to boot into recovery mode and restore the, the computer back to factory state. It just makes more sense. Uh, so we are going to preserve that in this method today and uh, you just have to make sure you do this right. Alright, let's just click on clone this disk here and you'll see our primary hard drive there and our second one on the bottom there. We're going to click uh, select disk to clone to. Alright, now we see our secondary disk on the bottom there. All right, with Macrium, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to just drag, drag them down in order, okay? This is important. One at a time, drag them down into the same order they were. Then when it comes to this big one, since it is uh, 910 gigabytes, and we only have 464 gigabytes of space left on our solid state drive, uh, we're going to have to resize that partition. So we're going to go ahead and drag it down. Then we're going to... Um, click on cloned partition properties and we're going to reduce this by the size of this last hard drive here so that is 20.1 gigabytes we need to take 20.1 gigabytes off of the partition size here so that'll be uh, 444.649 so I just subtracted 20.1 gigabytes from the partition size and that'll leave us with a space over here that is 20.1 gigabytes in size. If you have a lot of files on your primary partition there, um, you want to make sure that um, you back up enough of those files so that when you go to the new solid state drive, um, you end up with a, um, a drive that's going to fit on there. 
Like if you've got 600 gigabytes worth of files, you're going to have to copy off about 100 gigabytes worth of those files so that you're down to, you know, 444 or whatever size you're going down to. Um, if you're copying to a one terabyte uh, solid state hard drive, you're probably not going to have to worry about it. But 500 gigabytes and below, if you have a lot of files on your primary partition, you might have to back up some of those files so that you can get it down to, the, you know, around the 500 gigabyte level so it'll fit on that hard drive. But now that we have a 20.1 gigabyte space there, now we can just drag that down. So now all of our drives are exactly the same except for this one in the middle, which is going to be a little bit smaller. But they're in the same order, the same size, same everything. And that's important for maintaining your recovery boot uh, capability. But that's it. That's the hardest part. Now we're just going to click Next and going to click Finish. And it's going to go ahead and clone all five of those partitions exactly the way they were in the right order. Um, everything will be exactly the way it needs to be. This does take a while. It's going to take anywhere from you know 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how many files you have. Um, I think the last time I did this, it was about 35 minutes. If you do decide to do the the squeaky clean method, and you have a new Asus laptop with Windows 8.1 or Windows 8. Um, I've got a video showing how to create your recovery media on an Asus laptop, um, so make sure you check out that video. You always want to have your factory recovery media, no matter what kind of computer you have. Um, that way you could wipe out that, comp that hard drive, you could, uh, you could completely format it, go do whatever you want with it, and then you can always come back and use your recovery media to get back to the factory state. So make sure you have some sort of recovery media on hand at all times. Let's go ahead and pause this. I'll come back when it's done. We are back and it is complete. It took 31 minutes. Just click OK. This gives you a summary of what it just did. Go ahead and click the close there. It's going to rescan the hard drive buses. And you can see now we have our primary hard drive and our new solid state drive and they match pretty much perfectly. And that's it, we're done. There's no uh, booting into Linux or Windows pre-install environment. We're all good to go. All right, the next step is to go ahead and test it. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and shut off our computer and we're gonna install the new hard drive. And this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna install the new hard drive and I'm actually gonna make a video of installing the hard drive in this Asus laptop. Um, if you're not sure how to install a solid state drive into your particular laptop, you're gonna to wanna to look up a video on your particular model. Um, but I'm gonna do a video on the Asus laptop and uh, if you have a desktop computer, uh, you can check out the video on uh, installing a drive into a desktop computer. So I'll come back when I have the drive all installed. Okay, we have physically installed the SSD into the laptop now. If you have an Asus Transformer Flipbook in the 500 series, go ahead and check out the link in the video description below. Uh, it shows you exactly step for step how to install a hard drive and a secondary hard drive on this particular model of laptop. Um, if you have a desktop or another brand laptop, just do a quick search on YouTube. Uh, you'll probably find any number of videos uh, on your model showing you how to do a, a hard drive upgrade. Uh, but now let's go ahead and turn it on. If we did everything right, it should come right back to the way it was before because um, the, the hard drive has been cloned onto the new solid state drive. And it should be, yeah, wow, that was quick. All right. Yep, right back to where we were on a new solid state drive. And now we've got all the performance gains, super quick and snappy speed. Um, upgrading to a solid state drive is one of the best upgrades you can do, especially on a laptop like this. This is not exactly the highest rated laptop, but it does have the flip function and it does have dedicated graphics. So by upgrading the hard drive to a solid state drive and putting a secondary hard drive in there, um, we have turned this into probably one of the most vert versatile laptops you can get right now. Um, it's got the 840M graphics chip, 500 gigabyte solid state drive. This will be a good laptop for years to come. So be sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, check out my other videos.